To settle down with the breath involves two activities. One is to focus on the sensation of breathing in and of itself. In other words, you're not going to think about the breath in relationship to anything else at all. Just how does the breath feel as it comes in? How does it feel as it goes out? And then the second activity is to put aside any interest in the world outside. No matter how wonderful your thoughts may be, interesting, insightful about the world, they're not wanted right now. And you've got the message. You've got to get the message for both of these activities to everybody in the mind. Because the mind is like a huge crowd of people. Lots of ideas, lots of chatter. Especially if you just come to the monastery. There's probably a lot of chatter about what you saw before you got here and where you're going to go back to when you leave. And that simply gets in the way of being with the breath right now. You want to get everybody in sync. You've got to get the message across. Now, the way the mind gets messages to itself, it uses two things. One the Buddha calls directed thought and evaluation. In other words, you direct your thoughts to something and you make comments on it. It's basically the way you talk to yourself. And the other is through perceptions. Perceptions are like either individual words or images. It's the quick way of getting a message across. And these messages can be pretty pretty powerful, even just one word, just one image. And so the images of the world are things you want to put aside. The conversations about the world you want to put aside. And you want to replace them with images about the breath, images about how the world is something you really don't want to get involved with. That's why we had that chant just now, the world is swept away, it does not endure. Think about what you could be looking for in the world outside, and ultimately it's going to get swept away. Whatever you might lay claim to in the world outside, ultimately it's going to be taken. Whatever you might say is yours out there, it's going to be turning into something that's not yours someday. So if you're looking for anything really good to hang on to, it's not out there. It's going to be in here, in the mind. So use some of these perceptions, use some of these comments to wean yourself off of your interest for the world, at least for the time being. You're not expected to say, I'm never going to go back. All you're asked is, to clear some space in the mind right now so you can be with the breath, get the mind to settle down. Because the mind, in order to be well trained, has to settle down. If it's going to see itself clearly, understand itself, it has to be here consistently and with enough stillness so it can notice things going on that it didn't see before. Because everything you need to know in order to put an end to suffering is happening right here, simply that you're missing some of the things that are happening. So you've got to get the mind quiet. And as you've cleared away your interest with the world, then you can turn to the breath. And here again, you use perceptions and you use directed thought and evaluation. You want a perception of the breath that allows you to settle down and have a sense of ease in the breathing. And eventually the Buddha says, you want to be able to take that sense of ease and spread it through the body. So thinking of the breath as something that fills the body and can act as a vehicle for that ease to spread through the body is a very useful perception. And John Lee talks about breath as being not just the air coming in and out of the lungs, but also the movement of energy in the blood vessels and the nerves, out to every pore of the skin. So when you breathe in, think of the whole body breathing. And ask yourself, what kind of breathing feels good for the whole body? 
That involves not only adjusting the rhythm of the breathing, but also thinking of where in the body to, is there a sense of being blocked, a sense of tension that would prevent breath energy from flowing. If you can de detect any tension like that, allow it to relax. You might make a survey starting with the head, going down the back, out the legs to the tips of the toes, starting again at the head, now going through the shoulders and the arms to, down to the tips of the fingers, going through the torso and front and back to see if there's any tension that would get in the way of the breath energy flowing. Then you ask yourself, when you breathe in, where does it feel like the energy is coming in? Here again, John Lee talks about thinking of coming in right at the area of the heart, or coming in from the back, right at the base of the skull, going down the spine. Or you can think of the fact that since the breath is energy, there's some energy coming in from the outside, but there's also energy originating here in the body. It might be down around the navel, it might be at the breastbone. Is there any pattern of tension in the body that would get in the way of those energies spreading through the body, radiating through the body? But relax that tension. If you're not sure if there's tension, compare the right side of your body with your left. The right hand with the left hand, the right wrist with the left wrist, up the arms, starting again with the feet, up the ankles, the shins, the knees, into the torso, into the head. And whichever side seems to be holding more tension, allow that side to relax. And you might want to remind yourself that after all, the breath is the force of life. It only stands to reason that if the force of life feels constricted and tight, it's not going to be good for the body, it's not going to be good for the mind. So you're working on your health here at the same time you're trying to get the mind to settle down. This gives you one more reason to want to get interested in the breath. So these are the two ways in which you communicate with yourself. You hold an image of the breath in mind, and you talk to yourself about how it's going, asking questions, trying to figure out answers. It gets you interested in the breath, and more and more of the mind gets involved. If you told yourself, no thinking, no questioning, just do as you're told, large parts of the mind would rebel. So instead, you're trying to get everybody happy to be here, interested in being here. And the more you can get interested in the breath, the more the issues of the world can fade into the background. Or if they do come up into the mind, you, they have fewer hooks. They don't grab you quite so much. And then as the breath gets comfortable, You've got to watch out. You can't leave the breath for the sense of comfort. Here again, you've got to hold that perception of breath in mind. This again is the message different parts of the mind are sending to other parts of the mind. Stay with the idea of the breath as you're noticing the different sensations in the body. That's going to be the thread that carries you through. If you leave the breath for the sense of comfort, it'll be nice for a while, but you begin to lose focus. In some cases, it's almost like falling asleep. Not quite asleep, you're not totally oblivious, but you're not really sure where you are. And eventually it goes away. The concentration gets lost. The stillness gets lost. But if you keep that perception of breath in mind, this is bodily energy here. You've got something relatively clear for your focus. If the breath itself isn't clear enough, you can add a meditation word. Bhutto is popular in Thailand. It means awake. That's the title of the Buddha. That's not his name, by the way. It's the title. Someone awakened. 
that quality of being awake is what you're trying to develop here. So think boot with the in-breath, toe with the out. But if you find that you can stay with the breath, all the better, because it's more common. And you can see more subtleties in how the breath feels in different parts of the body. Go down to the spaces between the fingers and the toes. Sometimes you can even sense a kind of breath energy that surrounds the body outside of the skin, like a cocoon. But whatever you're sensitive to, that's what you focus on. And maintain your interest and maintain that conversation in the mind, both the perceptions and the directed thought and evaluation, until everything feels really good. Your awareness fills the body, the breath feels comfortable throughout the body. Then you can drop the directed thought and evaluation and just hold on to the perception of breath, just an image or a word. And that'll be enough to carry you through. But again, you've got to hold on to that perception. If you lose it, everything turns into a fog. Sometimes images not related to the breath come up. You don't want them right now. Just breathe deeply into the heart and they'll go away. Sometimes intense feelings of energy can go through the body. You don't try to stop them. But if you've opened up what are, what are called the breath channels in the body, it makes it easier for them to flow around the body, and to, if they feel excessive, they can go out. Two good places to think of their going out would be the palms of your hands and the soles of your feet. If there's too much energy in your head, you can think of it going out the eyes. or down the neck and then out the hands. And here again, it's useful to have a, an alternative perception. If the energy gets too strong, remind yourself there are many layers of energy in the body. So think of the, the fact that there is a more subtle energy level right there, in the same spot where there's the gross energy. And if the gross energy feels like it's putting a lot of pressure in different parts of the body, try to have a perception that allows the idea that the energy is pushing against something. Allow that to dissolve away. Remember that the body is made out of atoms, and atoms are mainly space. So you can think of the energy going through the space between the atoms or inside the atoms, and the sense of feeling trapped or having a lot of pressure will dissipate. Here again, it's a matter of having useful perceptions to send messages to different parts of the mind. Because you begin to become more aware of the perceptions you're holding onto that you didn't really notice. You just took them for granted. We make so many assumptions about the world, so many assumptions about the body, so many assumptions about the mind that we don't even realize that there are assumptions. We just think, well, that's the way things are. And a lot of meditation is putting a question mark next to that. Is it really the way things are? Or is it just a perception you're holding on to? The Buddha gives you alternative perceptions to use that can change the way you experience your body, change the way you experience your mind. If pains come up while you're sitting here, again, ask yourself, how are you perceiving the pain? If you perceive it as a solid lump, it's going to weigh down the mind. Try to see if you can see it as little, like little bubbles of pain, or little moments of pain coming and going. And then you ask yourself, when they come, do you think they're coming at you? How about if they're going away? In the same way as if you're sitting in the back of one of those old station wagons going down the road, and as soon as anything comes into your range of vision, it's going away from you. So instead of feeling that you're oppressed by the pain or attacked by the pain, think of it as soon as you're aware of a moment of pain, it's going away. 
it's going away. And you're going to ask yourself, does the pain have a shape? If it has a shape, you've given it the shape. Pains don't have shape. In our mind's eye they have a shape, but then again, that's the mind's eye. That's a perception. How about erasing that perception? And part of the mind will be afraid, because it's placed a shape on the pain because it thinks it can contain the pain that way. But you can't contain pain. All you do is create more tension. So if you can drop that perception, see what happens. These are some of the things positive and negative that may come up in the meditation. Even with the positive things, you've got to be careful so you don't get distracted, because you still want to stay with that idea of breath. And make your sensation or your conception of breath large enough to contain the idea that at times of the breath can be still. When the mind is really quiet, the breath doesn't need to come in and go out, because the brain is using less oxygen. And if everything feels well connected in the body, whatever energy needs there are in the body, they can flow from one part of the body to another without you're having to breathe in or breathe out. But it's still breath. It's still. Like the image on a TV screen when there's no channel. There's still light. There's still something coming in from the air, but it's not a specific shape. It's not moving in a particular direction. So there's still energy in the body, but it's not moving. It still counts as breath. Hold on to that perception that this too is breath, otherwise you lose your focus. So the perceptions you hold in mind will have a huge impact on getting the mind to settle down. both in getting it to come to the breath to begin with, and then in teaching it how to relate to the breath in ways that are more, more comfortable, more interesting, easier to stay with. Then you just start peeling away different layers of activity in the mind, holding that perception of breath as an energy that fills the body. And it either can be moving or still. And that perception gives you what you need in order to give the mind a soft landing. In other words, it comes in and feels right, feels at home. The idea of sitting here and not breathing may be scary to some people. You don't have to stop breathing. In fact, it's best that you don't try to stop breathing. But it can happen. Once everything is connected and everything is very still, it'll happen. It may take a while to get to sense it. This is what it really feels like being at home. But once you can get a sense of being at home here, then you're at the same place where the Buddha was on the night of his awakening. The mind still like this, breath energy filling the body very still, the mind, your awareness filling the body. In cases like this, with the activity in the body becoming so quiet, then whatever is going on in the mind becomes a lot clearer. And this becomes your laboratory. You can watch the mind. Because after all, the big problem in life is that we want happiness, but we do things that cause suffering. Even though we think we're doing things that will lead to happiness, they end up causing suffering so many times. And you want to be able to see that in action so you can do something about it. We're getting the mind to settle down, dropping all your other outside interests for the time being, getting really interested in how the mind relates to the breath, how the breath relates to the body. How you can find a sense of satisfaction and interest being right here. That puts you in the right place to see your mind in action.
So try to get everybody in the mind on board. Get the message out there. And for the time being, the world is far away. The breath is right here, and you're fully aware of it. And this is where you want to be. Get the perceptions, get your mental chatter all in line with this one purpose. Get the message to all the mind. And the more you can get everybody on board, the more there will be a sense of your full awareness is here, and it's filling the present moment. And everything seems like it's falling in the place where it should be. This is called making a home for the mind. A home where you can be at your ease, but also kind of the hang on of home where you can work from home. Because everything you need to know to understand the mind, to put an end to its problems, of, especially the big problem of how I create suffering, is all right here. And as you get the mind more still, you can access what you need to know.